Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time, slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. So, you've decided that you want to try part-time or full-time slow travel. Before you go, you'll want to make sure that you address several key things. This is the first in a series of videos I'm going to be doing about key issues that you need to address before you start on your slow travel journey. So let's get started with question number one, which is, what should I do with my house? If you're gonna be a part-time slow traveler, then more than likely you're gonna to wanna to keep your place so that you'll have a home base to come back to when you're not traveling. In that case, then the question becomes, what do you do with your house when you're not there? And there are a few options available to you. One is if you have family or friends who are willing to drop by your house every once in a while and check on things, that could work for you. I know for me, when I still had my house, even if I were only gone for two or three weeks, I still would be concerned and worried about what was going on with my house when I wasn't there. So I didn't have real good peace of mind while I was gone, even though I had people who were occasionally dropping by to check on things but that is an option available to you. Another thing that you could do is to rent out your place on a platform like Airbnb or Verbo. And in that case, you'll make a little bit of money, but you're also gonna be spending money because you'll have to have someone managing the place while you're gone. Someone there to greet your guests, to take care of any issues that may pop up, and also cleaning in between the guests that are staying there. Another possible option is to do a home exchange. In that case, you're essentially swapping your home with someone else so that you stay in their home at the same time that they're staying in your home. Now, obviously, there are logistics issues with that to make sure that you're wanting to do this at exactly the same time and that it's in a place that you want to go and a place that they want to go as well. So very restrictive. It's a possibility, a way to do things to have somebody in your house while you're not there, but it's gonna be difficult to logistically make that happen. Now, another possibility is that you could sell your house and downsize to something like a condo or an apartment, something where someone else is taking care of the maintenance and watching over it more closely while you're gone. So that's a possibility as well. If you're going to be a full-time slow traveler, then more than likely you're going to want to sell your house. That's what I did. And even though it's a big step to make, I don't regret it one bit. I'm very happy that that's the way that I did it. So even though I don't have a home back in my home country, I make home wherever it is that I am in the world. And I'm going to do a video on that at some point to tell you about the things that I do to make the place where I'm staying at feel like home. Maybe you still have a mortgage on your house. In that case, selling your house and being mortgage free, as well as not having those ongoing expenses that come with owning a house can be an amazing feeling. And even if you don't have a mortgage anymore, by selling your house, you're gonna be saving so much money and headaches by not having to pay taxes and insurance or take care of the ongoing maintenance or repairs that pop up from time to time. Now, obviously, you want to sell your house when you can get the best offer for it, essentially when it's a seller's market. But you never know when that's going to be. And the longer you wait, the longer you're postponing starting your slow travel adventure. So that's something you have to take into consideration and make the decision about how long you really want to wait until you sell your house so that you can get started on your travels. So if you do decide to sell your home, the next question that comes up is, what do I do with all my stuff? And even if you're not selling your house, or you're just downsizing, or you just want to become more of a minimalist, these are questions that you should ask as well. And so I'm going to be covering that in my next video in this series. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.